Hawaii earthquake, magnitude 5.3, strikes a big island. Does that mean that Kilauea volcano could be affected? Kate Whitfield, Express UK, reports. Well, you know, the big island has five volcanoes. It's made up of these five volcanoes, plus the Loihi Seamount, which is another underwater volcano that has seen earthquake uh, strikes, earthquake swarms recently as well. Now, uh, Hawaii's big island, shaken, struck by the strong 5.3 magnitude earthquake and aftershocks as well, and is still shaking. Uh, plus, we've had uh, earthquakes in uh, Kilauea and Mauna Loa, and uh, uh, to the south at Loihi. So, the same island, which is home to the world's most active volcano, will it be affected? The earthquake struck Saturday at 5 p.m. local time in the north area of Big Island. Big Island's Kilauea volcano has been in a near constant state of eruption since 1983. Uh, in 2018, we saw the huge shield volcano put on the imp impressive, devastating display with thousands of homes destroyed. The quake registered a 5.3, the one that took place, According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS said that the earthquake's epicenter was about eight miles northwest of the town of Kaloa. The tremor occurred at a depth of about eight miles and not particularly deep for an earthquake of this magnitude. In online submissions to USGS, hundreds of Big Island reported moderate to strong shaking and trembler from Hilo to Kailua Kona. Now, will Kilauea be affected? Kilauea is on the opposite side of this big island to the quake epicenter and was not within the shake radius. USGS monitored level for Kilauea as well as the other volcanoes on the island remains green normal. This means the volcano activity has ceased and volcano has returned to non-eruptive background state. But Kilauea is still ranking, ranked as having a very high threat potential volcano because of its decades-long activity. Scientists at USGS continue monitoring Kilauea closely at the situation as the situation unfolds. Just remember that when it stopped uh, last August, they said it was perhaps in a pause period. Now, following this earthquake, Hawaii Electric Light tweeted that roughly 3,000 300 customers were without power in the Paniolo Drive and Waimea side of Waikoloa, but it was restored within hours, and no serious injuries have been reported, but the earthquake did cause some serious rock falls. According to civil defense officials, the quake caused a large boulder to come down on Highway 19, Queen Kahumanu, and the Hapuna Junction, there was also a rock fall report on Highway 11 near the 100 110 mile markers. And the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center said no tsunami was generated by this quake. The Hawaiian archipelago sits on a hotspot of volcanic and seismic activity known as the Hawaii Hotspot. It sits right in the middle of the Pacific Ring of Fire, the most just, which has been uh, and is still uh, very active with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The most destructive recorded earthquake was April 2nd, 1868, when a magnitude of 7.9 triggered a landslide on Kilauea sister volcano Mauna Loa. Now, the quake was reportedly felt throughout the island, the big island, also on the remaining islands that make up the Hawaiian chain. And as I look into the size of Berkeley, I see that uh, the, the swarm after the 5.3, the biggest uh, quakes uh, aftershock after that was a three magnitude, uh, about 10 minutes later. And also, we had Mauna Loa about, uh, I would say, about seven minutes after the big quake, we had a Mauna Loa, seven minutes, yeah, Mauna Loa quake of 2.3. And that's uh, about a 30-mile distance. Uh, southeast from the big quake. Mauna Loa was about 
30 miles southeast. So it's not that far to have to be. And of course, we had the whole day shaking, even on Kilauea, uh, the East Rift Zone as well, near the Pu'o crater of a 2.2. Uh, that was about uh, four hours after the big quake. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.